Card Zero, Echoes of the 99, by August Servant, Volume 1. Lecture number two. Everybody's Christian. The more I read the Bible, the more my worldly vision improves. And as much as I can see that in this world the monsters win, I can also see that everybody is Christian, only they just don't know it. They forget the very age or era that we are all living in at present. Allow me to explain. The time before Jesus, the Christ, we call B.C., meaning before Christ, and it is marked by darkness. Perhaps this is why those days are also called before the awakening. However, upon his birth, ushered in by the astrological event of the East Star, the era that we now live in today began, known as A.D., Anno Domini, Latin for in the year of the Lord. And on a side note, we actually still celebrate the coming of the East Star simultaneously with the birth of Christ Jesus and the holiday that we call Easter. The word derived by putting the two words East and Star together as one. Do I have your attention yet? Now then, A.D., or our current timeline, marks the age of awakening, ushered in by Jesus and the acts or actions of his disciples to include the first calendar, the first coin mint, the first bank, the first church, the first printing press, the first printed book, Holy Scripture the first dictionary released as a Bible companion to define unfamiliar words used in the Holy Scripture, the first school, etc. The list is endless because seeing as to how we are still living under the blood or covenant of the Christ in the world of Christendom, all that we have today from governments to technology and that which lies within, we owe to Jesus, to his sacrifice, to be more specific. Still, we live in a world where the monsters win. But the monsters were here long before the coming of the Christ. And this is why we need his salvation. And it is also why Jesus said to be in the world, but not of it. However, in the meantime, there remains only one defense for God's children trapped in a world full of demons. And we met him in the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now as to the naysayers that believe that Jesus was just a man and nothing more, and to the people that like to say Jesus was this race or that race, the fact is Jesus was not the Son of any human man. And I cannot count how many times Jesus tried to tell anyone that would listen that God is his Father. Consider Matthew 22, 41 through 46. When Jesus asked the Pharisees, what do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? They all said, the son of David. But then Jesus said, but that makes no sense. Because why would David pray to the Christ, calling him Lord? If David then called him Lord, how was he his son? And no man was able to answer him. Well, allow me to give it a try. The reason why they could not answer was because they did not know that Jesus was not the biological son of Joseph. Because Mary was already with child pregnant before she met Joseph. So at the end of the day, Jesus belongs to anyone willing to claim him because he literally transcends the confines of race or culture. And this is what he meant when he said, Matthew 12, 50, 
For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother, and thereby binding anyone who would claim him to the Spirit of God, one people, one inheritance, and one nation under God the Father. One day, when John the Baptist came across the descendants of Israel, boasting about how they didn't have to do anything because they were entitled, he said these words to them, Matthew 3, 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we are of the blood of Abraham, our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. We attach ourselves to salvation as it is promised to us. To turn away from the Lord is like the fruit severing itself from the vine, not knowing that it is the beginning of death, choosing to rely on its own understanding, and eager to venture into a world of which it knows not. But unlike that piece of fruit, we, the children of the Most High God, can return home, and be readily received by a father of grace and forgiveness, eager to restore us to heights that even surpass our former station. Finally, repent means to turn around. Salvation means a safe return. And what these two words should mean to you is change your mind, reverse your thought process, and get back to God. The reason being, while there will continue to be many ways and means, there will always remain one hope. Jesus the Christ, the only means of salvation amid the gathering storm. Salah. The Warrior's Creed The reason why mercy is better than revenge is because even though you still have to look over your shoulder for someone looking to settle a score, if it's the person that you pardoned, then it just may be that they will show you the same courtesy. The greatest display of superiority can be found in mercy, for it is possible to defeat the fighting spirit of your adversary while they yet still live and breathe in the flesh. In this way, you kill the madness within them while leaving the empty space that remains for the Lord to fill. With the moral here being that one should seek to dispel the evil nature in the hearts of men without laying the whole person to waste and thus throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Two things people never forget, acts of rare kindness and actions of extreme malice. On the latter, if you break their spirit, then you've won the day. But if you did not, then you've made an enemy for life, and it just may be that you will rue the day. Rue the day, an idiom that means that the person will one day bitterly regret what they have done. My creed. I don't speak for God. Rather, it is God that speaks through me. For we are all messengers of God, as long as the message is good. Do not call me a preacher. Call me a doctor. Because my words, if taken to heart, can heal and bring comfort as surely as any drug. But where drugs are all man-made and bring as much harm as healing, my words, inspired by God the Father, are pure, tested, and want to be used towards your benefit, that God may be proven by your own testimony of relief and grace. To be clear, that which I do, I do for the advancement of the word and will of God because that is how I can best serve humanity and ensure the continuation of the good fight. Lastly, God is not invisible. 
He just knows how to hide in plain sight. And just as animals can smell your intent as well as your mood, the aura of a God-filled person has its own identifying qualities that both man and beast alike can sense or detect. And the best way to keep God close is to meditate on his word, demonstrate his principles, and only look and speak to the best in others with the understanding that respect is the door to which all are welcome to enter. Dialogue. All right, now listen to me. I need you to be strong and not so much for me, but for the memory. So that when you look back on this day, and believe me, you will often, that you will feel not a smothering shame, but an immense swelling of pride. And you will channel the emotion backing those feelings into raw momentum, strong enough to push you halfway through any future challenge, even before you get your hands dirty. That power, I guarantee, is making its way to you even as we speak. Now look at me. I am not your enemy here in this moment. I am your coach, and you can thank me later. With the moral here being, while the joy is in remembering, the pain lies in not being able to forget. Scripture 1. Matthew 5.16 Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 2. Proverbs 14.25 A true witness delivers souls. 3. Proverbs 10.17 Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whosoever ignores correction leads others astray. I submit to you, be worthy. Please allow me to introduce myself. You can call me August Servant, and it is a privilege to bring to you my captured Echoes of the 99 by way of Card Zero, the Fool.